Heyo everyone, I'm Kronos, and this is part 3 of my Honor Mode speedrun and achievement tutorial for Baldur's Gate 3. This part will go through all of Act 3 up until the end of the game. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure to follow along from parts 1 and 2, which covered the previous two acts. Also, if you are interested in seeing a glitchless run and tutorial, be sure to like and subscribe to stay tuned for more in the future. Before we get started, I want to cover infinite status mode a little bit more, uh, since you will be using it pretty extensively in Act 3. So right now I have infinite status mode on Tav, which allows all of your cooldowns for any turn-based uh, effects just to last permanently. So for instance, I have Featherfall and Enhanced Leap here, and they're not ticking down. So to perform this glitch, what you need is a way to revive a character and a dead character. So in this case, I'm going to do infinite status mode glitch on Shadowheart here. So that's going to be using magic missiles to just kill her. Punching her twice. And then I'm going to pick up this Revivify scroll. And yeah, so now we have Shadowheart uh, who is dead. So, first thing to notice is what we're going to do to perform the glitch is to pick up Shadowheart while you are in turn base mode. So, it's going to look something like this. So you pick up Shadowheart, and then you leave turn-based mode. You drop Shadowheart from your inventory, you can either right-click to drop, or drag and drop the body off where you want it. And then you're going to revive them by just using a scroll, for instance. And once they get revived, they have a infinite status mode on them. So once I cast Featherfall here, you can see Shadowheart now has 10 turns of Featherfall and it's not ticking down. However, you'll notice that my Tav, who used to have uh, the infinite status mode, no longer has it. That's because whenever you enter turn-based mode, with, whether it is manually by toggling it or by entering combat, it will remove the turn-based uh, per like a permanent effect. So. It's very important to understand this since we will be using it a lot in Act 3. Now I'll start going through the rest of Act 3. So once we left off out of Act 2 after the gift fight, uh, if you did gift skip, you should have your Tav and Shadowheart dead. And Tav's body, in this case, is dead at our feet. So we are going to perform infinite status mode glitch on uh, our Tav here and make our way all the way to the lower city. On the way, we're going to go kill Gortash, and it's pretty time-based if you want to cast the least amount of spells, but for the sake of this tutorial, I will be a bit slow here just to show how it works. So right here, I'm going to turn on turn-based mode and pick up my Tav. Your body's invisible for some reason because of a glitch. So turn on turn-based mode, pick them up, and then leave it. So that is setting up for when we enter Lower City, our Tav will be revived and it should have uh, the infinite status once we get there. So from here we're going to use Featherfall and Enhanced Sleep on Jahira, and we are just going to start making our way to Worms Rock. So I like to jump forwards here. Second jump should get to this edge here. I like to make my third jump in the center of this pathway. And jump further along, just follow this path here. I like to jump around that patch of grass. And then I like to jump to this set of grass right here. So here, there's a bunch of guards here. They're not going to let you enter the city. So, in order to get around that, we cast Invisibility, and then we jump onto this rock, 
and then we jump around to this wooden platform here. From here we jump up to this roof, up to the roof again, and all the way to this side. Then I jump to this roof, we're just making our way all the way to this section right here. So once you get here, uh, notice that all my uh, abilities ran out. Uh, in order to uh, get all the way through without losing all your cooldowns, uh, you just have to be a lot faster with it. The last spot you can use your spells, so for instance if you manage to run out of your timers here, you can cast them once more because once you get here, this is where your cooldowns will no longer work since you need to be invisibility and there, this is an area will you, where you will be trespassing in. So to avoid all that, we're going to just cast invisibility here along with Featherfall and Enhanced Sleep and we are going to be on a timer to uh, kill Gortash here in the method that I do in the current record. So I will demonstrate that route first. So it's going to look like this. Just make sure you have all your spells on and active. So uh, Featherfall, Enhanced Sleep, and Invisibility. Jump to this rooftop. Jump to the door. Open the door. And we are going to go through to Gortash here. So instead of talking to Gortash, we're going to use Improvised Melee Weapon and drag him all the way past this set of two Steel Watchers here. So it's just a left click to perform the improvised melee weapon. Once we get past the two Steel Watchers, we cancel the action so we don't uh, hurt Gortash, so he doesn't attack us. And if you do this correctly, you'll skip the cutscene with Gortash here. So afterwards, we're going to perform kidnapping, similar to how we did it in Act 2. We're going to use the throw button here. We're going to click Gortash, and then we're going to left and right click very quickly afterwards like this. And it should be able to pick up Gortash and throw him. So basically, you are able to carry him anywhere. I've noticed that people have been struggling with this. And there's multiple reasons why. For instance, if you are too far away and you are trying to do it, you might not be able to because you're not close enough for the action to actually occur. So you need to be very close to Gortash in this case. Also, I have heard that it might be frame rate based. So if you do have your frame rate set like mine. I believe I have 60 max frame rate cap here. That just makes it very consistent, uh, at least for me, although I'm not sure how other people have been feeling it, but this is what works for me. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and kidnap Gortash here. Like take a couple tries. There we go. And then we're going to cast Enhanced Sleep. And we're just going to start making our way down to the bottom. So we enter this passage, go down this way, and then you're going to have a cutscene with the Steel Watcher if you skip Gortash's cutscene. And we're just going to jump north this way to go drop Gortash off at this drawbridge. So to throw Gortash off, we're going to drop him off here by uh, using the throw button and that just places him back down when we cancel it and you want to make sure that your pass around this wooden decoration here this is so that these enemies here will not aggro to you when you kill Gortash and you have unlimited chances to kill Gortash here so you don't have to really worry if you fail the 42% chance here so throw Gortash off the edge and pick up his gauntlet. From here you get this cutscene, right click through it, and then leave it. And then just jump to the lower city right here. And enter it. So if you don't want to do the improvised weapon strat on Gortesh, I'm going to demonstrate 
the alternative way here. So once you cast all your spells on the rooftop here, and you make your way to the other side, you can just start the cutscene with Gortash here by entering into the fortress, going here, and then just start talking to him. So when you talk to him, just right click and keep pressing 1 here to go through his dialogue. It's a lot of it, but it's fine. So once you skip past that line, when you have this uh, line that says I must go, select that one. It's the fastest way to get past it, and then click 1, and just keep going and pressing 1, and that should get rid of all of the dialogue here. So that's the alternative way of going through this section. From there, same thing as before, just do the throw on him. So it's going to look something like this. And then just start jumping your way down to the bottom, just like last time. So once you enter the lower city, you're going to have a cutscene here with the nether brain. So just right click to skip it. So it'll look like this. And then switch over to your tab. So from here, you're going to want to level up. And this is important for some stats that we want. So you're going to want spells here. And the important spells that we need are Misty Step, Invisibility, and Darkness. So we're going to be selecting all of those. Make sure you prepare them as well. So Misty Step, Invisibility on this level. For this next level, Cantrip doesn't matter. For our spell, we want darkness for sure, the rest doesn't matter, and then we just want to make sure we prepare darkness as well. From here, I like to choose the athlete feat just for a longer jump distance. And then this level 5 here doesn't matter, we just select whatever spells you want. And then that's it. So from here, Shadowheart gets level, but we don't care for Shadowheart's level. And we're going to use Enhanced Sleep and Feather Fall on our tab. And if you did Infinite Status Mode glitch correctly, our tab should have the Infinite Status on these buffs. From here, we're going to make our way to the Fireworks Shop. So it's one long jump to the right there, so I can jump onto this rooftop. From this roof, I jump to this side of the roof. Jump to around the middle of this roof and jump to this roof here. Once I get there, I jump down to the bottom of these stair steps, and then I jump to uh, Fellow Gear's workshop for the fireworks. So here, you want to make sure that your tab has all the items you need. So in this case, uh, I want the armor, I want uh, the Warhammer from Ketherick, and I want the bell. So make sure you have at least these three items on your tab here. For the bell, you also want to put it in your hotbar here, since you're going to be needing to activate it as soon as possible for the Orin fight. So at this point, this is all the stuff you need for the end sequence. And we're going to talk to Avery here. And we're going to buy the fireworks. So here, we just sell our armor, that's Catherix. We buy all the fireworks that we can, so all these pop drakes, the squidgens, and the woglins. And we also want an alchemist fire. You can also buy some smoke powder bombs if you are scared as well that you don't have enough explosives. And I will also cover how to get even more fireworks as well. Uh, so here we just buy all of these, leave the shop, and now we're going to be using darkness to get all the rest of the fireworks here. So there's a bunch of fireworks in this center section, there's a fireworks display case and a bunch of fireworks here. Uh, there's a bunch of fireworks in the back as well, and those are all the fireworks that we need for the run. I will also cover uh, getting additional fireworks uh, 
after doing this the normal way. So right here, this is what I will do. You do have a timer on darkness though, despite having infinite status, so you ha do have to be somewhat quick on doing this, so just be careful. So I like to cast uh, darkness here first. Then you crouch to sneak high, and then from here you're going to pick up all the fireworks in this display case. Pick up uh, all the fireworks here. You don't care about the boxes of fireworks since they're too heavy to carry around. From here you pick up the pop trick and that firework there. Then I cast the second one here to grab four more. So make sure you're still hiding. And then I pick up these pop tricks, these wogglooms here that are hanging up here. And then just ch check around to make sure you don't have it more. You only get four from that one, so it might not be as necessary. But this back one right here is the most needed, so cast it to make sure you get all of these fireworks in this section. Then make sure you're hiding once more. Grab these fireworks here, the ones in these display cases, and these pop tricks, the squidgens up top, and then this fireworks display case here, and all these wogglims here. If you do this correctly, you should have about 60. In this case, I have 62 or so. 61. But yeah, that is all the fireworks that you need. From here, I like to do the jump flip through the wall here. So that's just a mash jump through the wall like this. So down around this staircase is where you aim, and then similar to the lever skip in Act 2, you're able to just walk straight through the wall. So if you don't want to do that, it's fine. Uh, this is what you would do otherwise. So uh, you could just exit the shop out of the entrance and then just jump around to the left here in any case that you fail at getting the fireworks for instance if you get seen by the guard here and they find you and then take all your fireworks something that you can do is pickpocket of avery here and you're going to take the seller key which is this key right here so it is a 7 check here, so you do have to get somewhat lucky, but this is only as a last resort scenario. But once you take that key, you are able to enter this hatch here. And there's a bunch more fireworks that you can collect here. Uh, there are traps in this area as well, so they'll have to be careful. But there's a display case of fireworks here, here's a fireworks here, and then here you'll notice that I'll probably fail some perception checks here, but it doesn't matter if you trigger these too much, because what happens here is even if you die, you can just long rest and it'll just revive your tav, so it's pretty minor. And you're still able to pick up these uh, fireworks that you can. So, all those. You can take this alchemist fire if you didn't get one earlier. Uh, and yeah, just whatever fireworks that are left in the area, you can pick up as well. And that should give you enough fireworks trust, for sure. There's just another about 20 or so. So as you can see here, now I have an extra 20 fireworks. So from here, you can just exit out, and you are good to go. From here, we jump up to around halfway through this uh, ramp here, so we can jump to the other side past this big gap. We're going to jump to these pigeons here, then jump to this rooftop here. The small roof there, yeah. From here we jump to this rooftop at the very end here, and then I like to jump around where this red table is. 
Then I jump to where this person is standing, basically. And then I jump all the way to this manhole here. And this is where we will enter the lower, uh, the sewers. From here, we are going to jump our way to Orin. So it's going to be in this direction to this door. Once we open the door, I jump to the other side and jump all the way up to this corner here. So once you get here, you don't want to pass this doorway yet until you're ready because we're going to be triggering the Orin cutscene here, who is Orin disguised as Yenna. And uh, basically we want to keep Orin in Yenna's form by using the bell. And by having the bell cutscene trigger before the Orin cutscene does, then Orin just gets stuck as Yenna for all the way until where we need to kill Orin. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to walk up to these patch of rocks here and you'll notice uh, Yenna spawn in. And once we see Yenna spawn in, we're going to quickly tap the bell. So it's going to look something like this. So we walk there, we see Yenna spawn in, we tap the bell and we get the bell cutscene. So, you want to make sure you don't skip out of this too quickly, because if you do, then Orin might talk to you after this cutscene. So, normally, you just wait a tiny bit, and then you press leave. Once you do that, make sure you don't talk to Yenna here, otherwise you'll trigger the cutscene once again. And that's basically the entire uh, skip for that. From here, we jump forwards here. And we're going to attack this hanging corpse with a fire bolt or a ray of frost, whatever works. That's just going to get the blood to spill here, so this door opens. So normally in this section there's a big fight that happens here, but we're going to avoid all that by turning invisible at this section. So make sure to have invisibility cast it on yourself. So once you do that, uh, start making your way down, couple jumps all the way to the end. So just get past all of these enemies and make your way to Orin. So right here we jump down to this set of stairs here. And then we jump all the way down to the bottom here and you should get this uh, waypoint for the Temple of Ball. That's going to be important for Jahira for the end of the run here. And we're going to just jump our way forwards to this set of doors. So once you reach this set of doors, uh, we're going to be casting Misty Step to go through them. And it's going to be something like this. So you'll notice that target is out of sight, but somewhere here there is an area where you are able to Misty Step through. So it's pretty small of an area, but it's pretty lenient since you can only cast it when you can cast it, basically. If you don't have enough spell slots, remember you have Arcane Recovery. You also can do a backup, which is grabbing a chest and doing a wall clip through this set of doors as well. If you are playing Dark Urge, you don't have to do this either. You can just talk to the person that's guarding the door and just talk your way through but here I'm going to show the misty step here so it's going to look something like this we teleport through we're going to jump down to the center here and you'll notice that Orin is still disguised as Yenna here with Yenna's body knocked out here so from here this is very important we're going to be toggling non-lethal attacks to be on. This allows us to defeat uh, Yenna here, stuck in this form, or Orin disguised as Yenna here. And this will allow us to basically kill Orin, since technically you're not supposed to be able to kill Yenna. Uh, just weird shenanigans with how the game works. So by doing the toggle non-lethal attacks, 
we are able to kill in one hit. So it is an 80% chance to hit. You have two swings because if you miss the first swing, you can turn on turn-based mode to get one more chance at another swing. Uh, if you fail both swings, uh, Yena will run off all the way and disappear. But then 20 or so seconds later, she'll reappear and you can just try it again. So you don't even have to worry if you do miss. It's just a lot of time loss if you do. So yeah. You can also dip your uh, Warhammer into the uh, candles here if you want to get guaranteed damage since I believe, well, you should do enough damage like all the time before we used to not be able to, but here we should be able to do it in one swing. So we're going to go attack here with non-lethal attacks on. We knock out Orin disguised as Yenna and that just triggers the cutscene. And basically we get the nether stone and complete this quest. From here, the Emperor greets us, say you're not ready. And then that's basically it. Now we have all three nether stones. We have Orin's nether stone here, and Jahira has Gortash's and Catherick's there. So we are good to go. Uh, something that you'll notice is we are not able to exit out of this area since we never opened the door. And the faster way to get out of here is to switch over to Jahira. And we're going to just use Jahira to go all the way to the Morphic Pools. So from here we're going to cast Enhanced Leap on Jahira. And we're going to jump onto this set of stairs on the way north. We're going to jump onto this uh, wall here basically and you should have enough distance to make it all the way to this other side here. So once you do that just jump through this doorway, jump to the edge of the docks here and from here you'll have all the cranium rats here. You want to make sure that you don't start the fight with them otherwise it'll be a pain so what I like to do is jump to the rats here and then jump to the other side and turn turn base mode on. That just guarantees that uh, we don't uh, trigger the fight. So once we do that, we're just going to use the boat and that should let us proceed through. From here, you'll enter the cutscene, just right click through all of it. And then from here, we're going to have a Shadow Heart, and we're going to switch over to her and jump into the Chasm of Water here, since we no longer need Shadow Heart. And by doing this, it allows us to skip the cutscene with the Nether Brain at the end of this section, which is normally very long. You have like three dice rolls that you need to do, so it's pretty long and it's nice to be able to skip past that. Well, From here waiting. we switch to Jahira and we're going to make our way all the way to the edge of the water here. Make sure you have enhanced sleep on and we're going to toggle the tactical view and you should be able to go scroll your camera down a bit down here so you should have a area where you can see your jump basically just be able to reach here. Uh, you're not going to be able to jump like normal, you're going to have to do the spam jump, so it's going to look something like this. And you should land on this set of rocks here. From here, you can just jump through to this side of rocks, and you should jump through these stones here by jumping close to around this torch. And you have to be far enough back to be able to make this jump, so it's going to look like this. And you're going to get the constitution fail thing here sometimes. So you don't want to be spamming jump because you might get stuck there. From here you might trigger this fight here with all these brains. Uh, you generally are able to not get that fight. But if you do, you should be able to have enough actions to make your way this way and that cancels the fight from happening. From here, 
just make sure you have your enhanced sleep on and we're just going to make our way this way to the brain couple jumps and then you're going to jump all the way down to the bottom here with the nether brain to skip all the extra stuns and because shadow heart is dead we can right click to skip all of this dialogue skip press one here to skip uh, the Emperor's dialogue and now we are back in the astral plane so if you did the gift skip you're going to have to do a couple things here because the gift will still be in this area since we skipped them before so what we're going to do is cast invisibility on our tab and uh, since I never went into turn base mode uh, with our tab here they're going to still have the infinite status mode at least for now so we're able to jump all the way down here jump to this area past these gifts they shouldn't notice you at all and then you're just going to talk to the emperor from here this is the most important part for the dialogue so you want to make sure that you say uh, you want to use the we the stones yourself to become a lithid. It's because you need a an lithid to defeat uh, the nether brain, otherwise you won't be able to. So select three, skip all the cutscene here, and then talk to the emperor again. Right click uh, to skip that and say make me a mind flayer. And then once you say open your mind to the parasite, you will turn Come. into an elephant. So from here, you want to make sure the Emperor is your enemy at the end sequence because you don't want any extra allies getting in the way of the fight. So to do that, I shove one of these gifts here. So that's just going to be shoving here. This will make them all surprised as well. So when we do it, the Emperor will leave and all these guys will be surprised so we're able to just book it to the portal and leave to enter the final sequence of the game. So once you get here, you're going to have Jahira and make her jump off the edge because we only want our tab to be the one to finish the run here since all the other characters will waste our time and we're just going to cast enhanced sleep and start making our way to uh, the fight so here I jump around to the left here instead of going the center way it's just a little bit faster once you reach the set of double doors here where there's talks about how you're alone which is Fun. And you can buy some stuff from Cole here uh, if you want. Uh, Cole does have some useful things like if you need scrolls of fly or something or potions of slumber to refill your sp uh, spell slots or extra smoke powder bombs just in case. You can always do that here if you feel like you don't have enough fireworks. So. That's always an option. I never do it since I don't find it necessary. But yeah. Once you get here, there's two routes. I'm going to show the first route here. So this is the standard speedrun route that I like to do. So generally you have enhanced sleep, uh, feather fall if you want. And then you're going to cast invisibility. So from here you're on a timer because there's going to be a bunch of enemies just flying or walking around. So I float all the way up to this rooftop and then I jump down to the bottom here because I have enhanced sleep and feather fall. And then you'll notice these enemies are walking by and patrolling the area and they do have invisibility vision. So you have to be very careful not to get seen by them and it's a roll on whether or not you will get seen. So. If you get lucky, or if you get unlucky, you will get seen by them, but most of the time it shouldn't happen. So we're going to just jump up to this ladder here, jump to the other side, 
and just make our way all the way past all these enemies to uh, the brainstem. So at this point, you should still have your enhanced sleep and feather fall. So that's one option. Uh, there's also another path here if you don't want to do this frog skip that I will be showing here. So I'll do the frog skip first just to demonstrate how it works. So here, normally you have enhanced sleep on and you're going to talk to the bell here. So left click to start the dialogue. And you're going to select option 1, and this will turn you into a frog. Turn on turn base mode so you have frog form, uh, so you can line it up easily here. And you're just going to move your camera all the way to the top of the brainstem. When you cast jump here, you can see the area where you can jump to. But you want to jump at the very top of this staircase here. This is because if you jump anywhere else, with the spam jump, you will fall through the brainstem and die, which is not a fun way to lose an honor mode run. So from here, you do the spam jump at the top of the stairs, which would look something like this. And you should appear at the top here. So once you are at the top, you end your turn. You should turn back to yourself once the frog timer runs out. And you triggered this cutscene, so right click to skip past all of that. And from here, uh, all that's left is going up to the brainstem. Uh, before we do that, we're going to use invisibility one more time. Once again, if you don't have spell slots, there's also a chest here that has a potion of angelic slumber, just in case if you want it to have your additional spell slots if necessary. Now if you don't want to do the more risky fast route, there's a very very safe route that you can take as well. So what you're going to do is cast Enhanced Sleep, and we're just going to start making our way this way. So we wake our way to around this set of stairs here, and we're just going to jump all the way up to the top here. And then basically we trigger this cutscene here. So, we skip all this dialogue here, just say 5 to get out of here. And from here, we're going to enter through this door. So this is generally where the big fight sequence would start, but what we're going to do is just cast invisibility. And we're just going to run past all of these enemies. Since we do have enhanced sleep, we can jump past them, it's a bit faster. But yeah, you're just going to ignore all of them, and they won't uh, fight you at all, so that's pretty fun. Just go all the way up to the top and go through the door, and since they don't have C invisibility, you're able to skip all these enemies there. From here, you're going to uh, go, if you don't want to do this, this frog skip, uh, you're going to have all these intellect devourers around. So what we're going to do here is we're going to cast invisibility right before this set of doors here. So it's going to look something like this. And once we walk into this area, we trigger this Nautiloid cutscene here, but that doesn't matter. Uh, so once you do that, we're going to uh, just walk up here. You can exit uh, turn-based mode as well, and we're just going to fly all the way to the top here. So it's one fly from here. I like to fly around this edge. Then we fly all the way around to the, around this area here, and we are able to fly all the way through this window that's open up here. So just fly like that. And that's the alternative method to reach the top here. And from here, we're going to cast Invisibility and enter the brainstem. So when you do it, you'll open this uh, cutscene here. That doesn't matter. Just click the brainstem and say you are ready. From here, right click to skip all this dialogue. And you're going to make your way to the crown. So here, you just levitate right next to this dragon, 
This is so you avoid these tentacles that are around it. And then you levitate all the way up to the crown. And because you're invisible, you're able to do the two turn crown thing in just one turn. So it should look something like this. And once you enter the cutscene here, just right click and you are in the nether brain fight. So from here, this is where it's very important that you have all your fireworks, all your spells, and all your movement pretty precise here. Because if you waste movement, you're going to need a second turn to do your setup. So what I do is fly all the way down to the nether brain. So it's just around this area here. And we're going to drop off all the fireworks one by one. And we're going to throw a flask of fire at it and just destroy it. So it should look something like this. So I fly down and then I open my inventory and I'm going to drop all the fireworks down basically right at my feet here. You don't want to place them far away because your character is going to move and that will potentially make up all your movement turn or the left that's left of your turn so you want to make sure you place them right next to you so you don't move just put all the fireworks that you have so it should look something like this and then once you do that you're going to walk as far away from the fireworks as you can so i like to walk like this for instance and you should have enough distance away that you don't die to the fireworks. If you are scared about dying to the fireworks, what you can do is you can wait one turn here. It'll have the cutscene with the nether brain, but you shouldn't take any damage or die. And then you can use your second turn to walk further away from the fireworks. But I believe this is far enough, so I'm going to go ahead and blow them up. So just make sure you throw the fire bomb on the fireworks, like so, and that should end the game. Resist. So right there, you have the nether brain cutscene, you right click to skip past all of it, and you can choose whatever endings that you want. So, for instance, you can dominate the brain, command the brain to destroy itself. It's up to you. Basically, at this point, you have completed the game, and that is all that is left of the run. So that's it for this tutorial video. So, hopefully you all enjoyed this series. I will be doing, once again, a glitchless uh, run and tutorial eventually in the future. That'll probably be sometime in late January, early February when a route will be developed and everything for it. And it will probably be around two hours. I've gotten quite a few comments on having a glitchless run, so that's one of the main reasons that I want to do it. And I have been receiving a lot of comments on being able to do these tricks on console. Unfortunately, I don't have a console to test everything, but I have been getting and giving feedback uh, from a lot of people on whether they or not they're possible. And once again, it's a lot of just comments that I've been responding to. Really appreciate it. And if you have any questions or comments about the video or run, please feel free to like and subscribe and comment down below and I will be able to answer all your questions that you have. So that is all, take care and have a good day. Do it correctly, the fireworks should go boom.